Hi, I'm Matt Hagney. And what we're going to talk about today is how to make the John Deere 50, 60, and 90 series drills perform a lot better. As you know, they're originally equipped with a downforce spring here. Because of the orientation of that spring along this arm, it's very susceptible to changes in this opener position. You may know that if you compress that spring a couple of inches, you'll get maybe 500 pounds of actual down pressure on this opener. But if that spring relaxes halfway, you now have half, half as much pressure. If it relaxes completely in a small depression, now it's just the weight of the opener. Meanwhile, other openers are going up over slight rises in the terrain. No field is laser level. Those springs are putting down way more pressure on the opener. For instance, maybe you're trying to put 500 pounds down. The springs that have relaxed a little are only putting two or 300 pounds on, or maybe none. The other springs that have compressed even further are putting on perhaps 700 or 800 pounds of pressure which is doing you no good. Meanwhile, the ones with too little pressure are not holding depth, and you may have uh, stands fail because you're not getting the moisture. With a hydraulic cylinder, we get uniform pressure throughout the range of stroke. If it's 500, it's 500 all the way throughout the range, no matter if you're down in a depression or way up on a mound. This lets you use the frame weight far more effectively. You're not wasting pressure over compressing springs and putting seven or 800 pounds of pressure on openers. That's just, all it's doing is overpacking the sidewall. You just needed the same pressure. But because so many of those openers are down in little depressions, everyone cranks the pressure up trying to get the last 25% of the openers to work halfway decent. And meanwhile, the other half or so of the openers are way over compressed. Here we get uniform pressure on every opener throughout the range of stroke. We also have more range of stroke than the original spring did. Not only do we have effective pressure all the way to the end where the spring was rapidly decreasing, but we've given them about an inch more downstroke Plus, we've got far more upstroke than the spring had. The result is very little stress and completely uniform pressure on all openers all the time. This is the manifold for our Uniforce down pressure system. Uh, it looks big and complex, but it's really pretty simple. Uh, the cylinders on the Uniforce are single action, so they're pressure down. The only thing pushing them up would be the force of the soil. So we're supplying pressure through this manifold. We've got pressure reducing cartridges here. The number needed depends on the number of openers on the drill. And that feeds out through these lines and goes to various points on the drill so that we're getting quick flow of oil all across the drill. Originally we tried doing some fancy things with sequencing valves and so forth. Uh, what was settled on is reducing some of that complexity. It was unnecessary. Now we just leave pressure on the Uniforce cylinders all the time. Uh, that presents no problem whatsoever from wear or taxing the tractor. Um, and it, it, uh, it simplifies the system greatly. So our pressures have cylinder, uh, our cylinders have pressure on them all the time, uh, raised or lowered and you do, the rock shaft does the raising and lowering. So what you originally adjusted for pressure on the rock shaft, you now do that with this valve and washing this gauge on ours. The rock shaft, uh, and this is a 60 foot drill that's been updated with Power Beyond. This is the rock shaft, the John Deere valve block of the rock shaft. Now we set the pressure here very high and leave it high. There's no risk anymore of the rock shaft lifting the entire frame of the drill. It cannot. The only thing that can lift the frame of the drill would be as if we ran too much pressure on the Uniforce manifold. On our Uniforce cylinders, we use half inch hoses to supply them. This may be bigger than the absolute minimum, 
but we want very fast response in this cylinder as it's going up and down the terrain. Some drill manufacturers have hydraulics already installed um, as an option, not John Deere, but others, and they may try to get by with smaller lines, but we don't cut corners. On the air drills, we also use three quarter inch header hoses to rapidly move the oil across the drill frame. Because air drills are fairly wide, we need to be able to move a lot of oil quickly from one end to the other, especially when going over terraces. We designed these drills here in Kansas where we have terraces and to make them work well and have all that oil moving around as the drill goes up and over terraces, particularly going straight up and over a terrace, uh, we've overbuilt them quite a bit so that when it comes to making this drill perform flawlessly on flat terrain, that's child's play. Our cylinders are very easy to install. You simply remove the OEM spring and the mechanism that holds it. This goes into place with the original pin and we've got a special bushing system that holds it in place on the bottom. There's, uh, this bushing is, has a contoured face so that as this whole thing moves through the field, there'll be a rocking movement here uh, and this allows the cylinder rod to never have any stress on it. That does a great deal for the longevity of the packing rings around this rod. Our cylinders have extra packing rings and made with a very high density rod uh, for great longevity. There's a tab washer here on the bottom that holds this bushing piece so that it's always in the correct position for this rocking to occur. 